I'm Father Larry Christian. And I'm Gloria Zafian. It is Good Friday, and Catholic Television of Antonio welcomes you to the heart of our beautiful Alamo City for this very, very special event. It is an honor to lead you through this reenactment of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ as it is being broadcast live from San Fernando Cathedral. Gloria, this is the 30th anniversary of the live broadcast. It certainly is. That's right, Father Larry. It's a gorgeous day out here on Main Plaza. And we welcome our television audience on Catholic Television of San Antonio, our viewers on Facebook, as well as our national audience this year on Catholic TV. This is a story of love. The Passion of Christ has been retold for centuries. But to paraphrase St. Augustine, it is a story ever ancient, but also ever new. Mm -hmm. And now let us witness the trial of Jesus Christ as reenacted for us by the parishioners of San Fernando Cathedral and as described for us by the four evangelists. This, uh, Gloria, every year, um, we have come together here. You and I have had the opportunity to be together a couple of times now. That's right. Uh, to witness this broadcast. Um, but it, it is something that the people of San Fernando Cathedral have been doing for many, many decades. It's true, Father Larry, and it reminds me a little bit of what the parishioners in the village of Oberammergau mm, right. in, in Germany uh, have done for centuries. Uh, in thanksgiving for being saved by a plague in the Middle Ages, every 10 years they reenact the Passion. Now, it has not been centuries, but it is a 30-year tradition that the par parishioners here at San Fernando Cathedral yearly put on the Passion play right. in public from Milam Park through the streets of San Antonio right. here to hear in front of the Cathedral of San Fernando. They are actually going to pass along a route that's more than a half mile long. And uh, the people uh, line the streets all the way from Milam Park to uh, uh, Main Plaza in yes. front of San Fernando Cathedral. Uh, because it's Holy Week, we have a lot of visitors from many other cities. Uh, but also the people of San Antonio have really embraced this as a part of their own tradition. That's right, Father Larry, it's true, and we get many visitors. And just before our live broadcast, I was downstairs uh, close to the cathedral entrance, and I was stopped by two persons who asked me, uh, is it possible for us to go to the cathedral for just a few minutes? We are from France. Uh, might it be possible? And of course, the first mm. thing I thought of yeah. what, was what has happened recently at the Cathedral of Notre Dame, right. uh, the, the fire that took place, and they were from Paris. So I said, of course, please come in. I alerted the people inside to let our French visitors come and visit our cathedral just as the Cathedral of Paris is hurriedly being prepared. Right, right. I did see today that uh, sometimes people forget that cathedrals are also living parishes as yes, well. Yes, that's right. And uh, so the people in, uh, in Paris, they're actually putting up a wooden structure that they will be able to use during the period of the reconstruction of the cathedral there. That's wonderful. Well, especially as we are within the Triduum, I am sure that uh, Paris will celebrate with their cathedral worthily. Oh, I believe they will. You know, in an era, uh, Gloria, where sometimes uh, you might get the impression that, well, the faith is disappearing or the faith is dead or what have you. One of the things I noticed Monday uh, when uh, the world was watching the, the fire in the roof of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris was the outpouring of the people on the streets. And they were not old people. They were young people yes. singing our Catholic hymns, praying for the firefighters and for the uh, saving of the, of the cathedral. And, uh, and it struck me 
that the faith is so alive in the hearts of the people. Yes, even in a country as secularized as France. It's very true. Uh, there are still very many baptisms in mm -hmm. France. Right. And I'd like to think that that baptismal faith was awakened oh, by right. this event. Gloria, I understand that we are going now to witness the trial of Jesus at Milam Park. Atención pueblo, Pilato se hace presente para juzgar a Jesús llamado en Nazareno. Tráiganlo. ¿Qué ha hecho este hombre que merece ser tratado de esta manera? Si este hombre no fue un lechor, no lo hubiéramos puesto en tus manos. Pero es cosa de ustedes. Júzguenlo según su ley. A nosotros no nos permite la ley imponer la pena de muerte. Solo tú tienes ese poder. Solo tú puedes condenar a muerte. ¿Condenar a muerte? ¿Qué ha hecho este hombre para merecer morir? ¡Que muera! ¡Que, ¡Que muera! muera! ¡Que muera! Con ese hombre. ¡Que muera! Hemos comprobado que este hombre agita al pueblo. Aún más, es un malhechor. Dice que no hay que pagar impuestos a César. Y se hace pasar al Mesías. Rey, que viene y se va a su pueblo. No encuentro que este hombre haya cometido un gran crimen de muerte. Eres tú el rey de los judíos. Viene de ti esta pregunta. Repites lo que otros te han dicho de mí. ¿Acaso soy yo judío? Tu pueblo y los jefes de los sacerdotes te han entregado a mí. Dime, ¿qué has hecho? Mi reino no es de este mundo. Si fuera rey como los de este mundo, mi guardia habría luchado para que no cayera en manos de los judíos. Pero mi reino no es de este mundo. Entonces, tú eres rey. Tú lo has dicho. Yo soy rey. Para esto nací. Para esto vine al mundo. Para ser testigo de la verdad. Todo hombre que está de parte de la verdad 
Escucha mi voz. ¿Qué es la verdad? ¿De qué verdad hablas? No encuentro ningún motivo para condenar a este hombre. ¡Tiene que morir! ¡No seas traidor! ¡Van contra el César! ¡Sí! ¡Se hace rival de César! ¡Tiene que morir! ¡Condénalo! ¡Condénalo! ¡Que muera! ¡Que muera! Este galego predica y agita al pueblo por toda la región. ¿Galileo? ¿Este hombre es Galileo? Sí, él es de Galilea. Entonces, él es de la provincia de Rodes y él está en Jerusalén en estos días. Llévense a Rodes, ya que está bajo su jurisdicción. Soldados, llévense a Rodes. Aquí te traemos a este hombre llamado Jesús, que se dice ser rey de nuestro pueblo. Así es con que tú eres Jesús. Hace mucho que quería conocerte. He escuchado tantas cosas de ti. Además, ha escuchado de la gente que tú haces milagros. Bien. Yo quiero que tú hagas un milagro. Yo he probado. Anda. Vamos. Que conviertes y hagas un milagro. Te lo ordené. ¡Este hombre es falso! Es un malhechor. Agita a la gente y se burla de nuestra ley y de nuestras costumbres. Predica un reino para todos. <risa> y se dice que es rey. <risa> Ajá. Bueno, rey. ¿Qué dices de estas ocasiones? Quiero que te defendas. Quiero que te defendas. 
de estas acusaciones. Vamos, contesta. Bueno, ya que se dice rey, hay que vestirlo como un rey. <ríe> Soldado, tráeme una capa para este rey. Aquí está tu capa, rey, muy bonita. Ahí está, bien para ti, rey. Bien. Yo ya me aburrí de este hombre. Tengo otras cosas más importantes que hacer. Soldado. Llévatelo, llévatelo, llévatelo. Yo no quiero nada, nada. Ustedes me presentaron a este hombre acusándolo de agitador. Yo mismo le interrogué delante de ustedes, pero no la hay culpable de ninguno de los crímenes de que la acusan. Ahora tampoco Herodes la encontró culpable, puesto que me lo mandó de vuelta. Ahora, como ustedes ven, en todo lo que hizo, no hay ningún crimen que merezca la muerte. Así es que, después de castigarlo, lo dejaré libre. ¿Pero por qué? ¿Qué es el crimen que este hombre ha hecho como para matarlo? ¡Crucifícalo! 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 ¡Que muera! ¡Que muera! Pilato, no te metes con este hombre porque es una persona buena y anoche tuve un sueño horrible por causa de él. Soldados, tráigame a Barrabás. Pues bien, es costumbre en la Pascua que yo les devuelva a un reo. ¿Quieren que deje libertad al rey de los judíos o a Barrabás? ¡No! ¡A ese no! ¡Suéltame a Barrabás! ¡A Barrabás! ¡A Barrabás! ¡Suéltalo! ¡A Barrabás! ¡Suéltalo! Soldados, suelta a Barrabás. Ahora vas, eres libre. ¿Y qué quieren que haga con Jesús? ¡Crucifícalo! ¡Crucifícalo! ¡Me muera!
soldados. Lleven a este hombre a ser azotado. Vente, Jesús. Está el hombre. Tiene que morir. Blasfemo. Dice que es el hijo de Dios. Crucifíquenlo, crucifíquenlo. Que se muera. Blasfemo. Crucifíquenlo, crucifíquenlo. Que muera. ¿Qué dices en defensa tuya? Contesta. No me contestas a mí. No sabes que tengo el poder. No tienes ningún poder sobre mí. Si no lo hubieras recibido de lo alto. Por eso, el que me entregó a ti tiene mayor pecado que tú. Miren, miren a su rey. Nosotros no tenemos ningún rey más que el César. Si lo sueltas, no eres amigo el César. Traidor, porque todo el que se proclama rey va en contra de César. Tiene que morir. ¡Que muera! ¡Que muera, mátalo! ¡Que muera! Yo ya no me hago responsable de la sangre que se va a derramar. Esa es cosa de ustedes. La muerte de este hombre está en las manos de todos ustedes. Soldados. A la cruz con este hombre. A la cruz con el rey de este pueblo. Anyone who has had the privilege of visiting the city of Jerusalem knows that the path 
that Jesus originally took through the streets of Jerusalem in what is now the old city were narrow streets. Very narrow, yes. Narrow, uh, cobblestone, uneven, not dissimilar to the streets in San Antonio through which our passion play will pass. Uh, it's the corollary is, uh, is going to be uh, quite, quite similar. Mm -hmm. And just as Jesus walked through the streets of ancient Jerusalem, as people were lining the streets, as markets were taking place and shopkeepers had their stores open, so it is today. Right. Uh, it is Good Friday, but there are many stores that are open. Uh, certainly, a lot of traffic in the streets. Uh, there is yeah. traffic, not on the street where Jesus is walking through the streets yes. of San Antonio, but you can hear the cars. The narrow streets are lined with people watching. That's correct. And uh, it really brings to mind what took place over 2,000 years ago. It's interesting that you mentioned that, Gloria, because I. And we've both had the opportunity to be in Jerusalem and to walk that route. Yes. And um, at the time of Jesus, probably the majority of the people in those streets really had little to no idea what was going on. And yet, uh, uh, the act of was taking place uh, right in the midst of all, all of that. That's true, Father Larry. And uh, for so many, in the city of San Antonio and beyond, what is taking place, the reenactment of the story of our redemption. Uh, people are unaware. People go on about their daily business, as they have for centuries. But those of us who believe and who cherish all of these events remember them yearly, annually, on this day. and. We are so privileged in San Antonio to have this beautiful space, especially in front of the Cathedral of San Fernando, where we can reenact live. And the weather very often permits us to do this. You know, Gloria, as you're saying that, it may, reminds me of uh, the importance, uh, the value of a cathedral in a, in a community. Um, Again, I think we felt this at the beginning of Holy Week of the events at Notre Dame de Paris. And uh, we experience it very frequently here in San Antonio. Our cathedral is a very special place. Uh, many people don't realize that it is the oldest functioning cathedral in the United States. Uh, often we think of Baltimore as the first cathedral, and that's true if you're only counting the first 13 colonies. Correct. If you're counting the whole United States, uh, San Fernando Cathedral is the oldest functioning cathedral in uh, the United States, and it is still a real center of our community, our life. Uh, when we have had uh, uh, great community issues, uh, people gather at San Fernando, whether they are Catholic or not, uh, yes. This is the spiritual heart of the city, and this is the spiritual heart toward which uh, Jesus and those walking the way of the cross with him are coming down. It's very true, Father Mary, and it has been the center of the city spiritually and also geographically. Uh, if one even Googles San Antonio, the heart of San Antonio is in the center of the cathedral. Even if one goes inside the cathedral today, there is a plaque on the floor saying this is the center of the city. So it is right. both the spiritual and the material heart of the city. As many uh, cathedrals or large cities were in the 17th and 18th centuries when they were built in, at that time, Spanish and even French territories, which San Antonio was at that time when it was first settled by the Canary Islanders, who were Spanish. Ah, we have a fall of Jesus.
Jesus, uh, as we celebrate the way of the cross, uh, there are three times when Jesus falls. And Lord, I always take that as a reminder that we are, when we're walking the Christian life, we are on a kind of pilgrimage. Uh, Jesus, if you will, carrying the cross is on his way to Calvary. When we are living our Christian life, we're on a pilgrimage and we fall on that journey. I don't, maybe you don't, but, oh, but no. I fall on my journey. And I need God's grace, I need God's help in order to get back up again. Indeed, uh, we all do, Father Larry. We are all sinners, as St. Paul would say. If you are not a sinner, you are yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, it is true. We all have our falls on our own pilgrim way. And yet, we have the grace of God to assist us to get up and to continue. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, well, on Jesus' way, he will soon meet his, uh, his helper. He will soon meet Simon of Cyrene. And the Simon of Cyrene who will meet Jesus is someone who is well known in San Antonio. I will not spoil it for the rest of the audience who may be watching, uh, but it will be a figure who we will identify when he comes on screen. Uh, there's many kinds of pilgrimages, in fact, the way of the cross, the stations of the cross that are in every Catholic church today were a way in which persons who wanted to walk the way of the cross in Jerusalem, who could not make the long journey to Jerusalem, or whose way was barred during the Crusades, during all the unrest, the stations of the cross became a tradition so that persons everywhere could make the way of the cross, could accompany Christ on his way of the cross in their own churches, in their own communities, something which is still a tradition today on every it Friday is. of Lent. And uh, many places also have outdoor stations of the cross, and, and you're kind of walking them. Yes. Again, that image of the pilgrimage. Have you ever been on pilgrimage? I have. I have to various places. Uh, it was certainly a pilgrimage when I went to Jerusalem and other holy sites uh, in Israel. Uh, I have also been to pilgrimage in other holy places to the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C., to the Shrine of saint Anne de Beaupré in Canada, and the missions in California. I've been to all those missions there, all the way up from uh, the first mission in the south in San Diego, all the way to the north. And there's also a new pilgrimage uh, that we can invite people to make in San Antonio. Would you like to comment about that, Father Larry? We have the old Spanish missions here in San Antonio that were founded actually about a, a decade or two before the missions in California. A lot of people don't realize that, but the, the missions here were founded by the uh, Franciscan missionaries. Also like in California, like in but California, beforehand. But beforehand. And uh, those missions uh, are now part of a national park, uh, which is operated jointly by the government and by the archdiocese, which is uh, an unusual arrangement. But uh, it is possible to walk uh, that pilgrim journey uh, from uh, the missions all the way here to San Fernando Cathedral. And uh, we're working on that now. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful pilgrimage experience. And a real, the thing that happens in pilgrimage is a spiritual reawakening. And it reminds us of the journey of life. It reminds us of the passion. When we walk that journey, we are carrying the cross of daily life. Uh, we are bringing uh, our own sufferings and the sufferings of others along with us. And we are lifting those sufferings up to God and carrying the cross of each day. It's true, uh, Father Mary, and 
uh, these missions, which are part of the National Park Service, part of the National Park uh, chain in the United States, they were also named as as uh, World Heritage Sites. It's the only they're only World Mission sites in Texas, even though there are several in the United States. And the city of San Antonio, uh, in preparation for their being named World Heritage Sites, has made this walkway between uh, Mission Francisco Espada in the south of the city, to Mission San Jose, to Mission Concepcion, all the way to the cathedral, as you have mentioned, walkable and bikeable. Right. Uh, so that one can actually walk as a pilgrim these holy sites. And as we know from possibly uh, the most famous pilgrim way of all, that of the Camino de Santiago right. in, uh, Spain. in Spain, yes, and one can start in Paris, one can start in Spain, and can start in Portugal. There's many places where one can begin. There's people who undertake pilgrimages for many different reasons. And so is the case here in San Antonio. Uh, the Way of the Cross here in San Antonio is a public spectacle. I am sure not everyone who is witnessing it or even walking it may be someone who belongs to the Catholic or even Christian faith. That's right. But people make pilgrimages for very personal reasons, for spiritual reasons, and for, the, for ways in which they can find something out about themselves. And so we hope that that is also a part of this pilgrimage which we see being reenacted today. I have been reflecting with the people in my parish, Gloria, about uh, sacrificial love. Uh, our broader culture, in many ways, has reduced love to pleasure. And Here is Mary meeting oh, her yes. son. Yes. What a tender and intimate moment. You cannot imagine the pain of a mother watching her own son have to go through this. Her innocent son. There is nothing like In that sense, we might recognize that the sacrifice of Christ is also a sacrifice for his mother. That she has handed him over, so to speak, uh, for yes. this purpose. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, we know that this was one of the seven sorrows of Mary. And we know that when Christ was an infant, when he was presented in the temple, that Simeon foretold that a sword would pierce Mary's heart. And I'm sure Mary felt that piercing here on this day. And we know from the scriptures that she carried all these many things in her heart. And those who love the most are the ones who suffer the most. So just as Christ has loved us and has suffered so much for us, we know that Mary, our spiritual mother, suffers for her son and for us and as well. And for us as well. The world of the Romans was a very cruel world, and we uh, we often were so distant from it historically that perhaps we forget, but we can see it here as the soldiers continue to mock Jesus on his way, as they continue to uh, uh, whip him. Uh, the, it, it, the world of Rome, we often forget, was a world that was filled with many, many slaves and with the oppression of all those who were not Roman. And um, uh, there's been great cruelty in the world for centuries, but this was one of the history's most cruel moments uh, during the Roman Empire. Yes, uh, 
that's absolutely right. And Jesus was condemned to the most terrible kind of death that the Romans allowed. Uh, something like a beheading, which was suffered by St. Paul, was considered a merciful death, which was yes. why that was his death sentence. But crucifixion was not only death, it was considered a torture. Uh, the torture begins by uh, what we are witnessing now, uh, by carrying the, the instrument of his death through the streets as he is mocked and reviled publicly, as even as he is weak and bleeding and falling, uh, he is urged on by additional pain. It was intended as a humiliation. Yes, that's Not right. only for that individual, but for the people watching to show who's in charge here. And right, right and how he was not permitted to have anything. Even, even his cloak was uh, gambled away by the soldiers, as we know from the Gospels. So we see Christ walking through the streets as people watch, as the soldiers continue their cruelty continue the humiliation that you uh, you describe and show Christ as an example to those who would defy the Roman governor and uh, those who would go against uh, Caesar. We know that Palestine was under Jewish was under Roman oppression. The Jewish people were under Roman oppression which was why Pilate had to be the one to condemn Christ to death. So his followers who are watching Christ in sorrow at this time, who are not as brave as his mother to walk up to him, uh, are, were expecting for Christ to overthrow Roman oppression. They were expecting for the Redeemer to redeem they wanted, Israel. They wanted an earthly Messiah. Correct. Uh, and uh, someone that would restore the ancient kingdom of, of, of David. That's right. But Jesus was inaugurating the new kingdom of God. Right. And in which not only the Jewish people, but people of every nation would partake. Yes. And we know from Palm Sunday, just a few days ago, that in the streets, the very same people who are reviling him now and mocking him on the streets were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, because they were expecting this son of David to restore the kingdom of David. But now, arrested and beaten, and on his way to his death, they are disappointed, they are angry, they are furious that this Christ did not fulfill what they wanted. They do not accept or recognize the spiritual kingdom that he is redeeming. Well, they just said it a few moments ago in the trial when they said, we have no king but Caesar. Yes, there, there is his second there fall. There is his second fall. There is his second fall. He is weakening. We know that physically, Christ had not eaten, had had nothing to drink, had already lost a lot of blood, and uh, was under the weight of that cross and the cruelty of those around him. And in the hot, hot sun. to help him, no one assists him, but wait, the soldiers do not want him to die on the way, they want him to die the ignominious death of the cross, they encourage him to get up, they flog him, 
until he gets up so that he can continue on his way. Continue on the journey. You know, I'm just thinking that sometimes when we fall, personally, individually, uh, in our own sins and our own shortcomings, that we too sometimes have a hard time getting back up again, and that it requires uh, assistance, we need help. It's one of the reasons why in the church we have the sacraments that we do. Uh, the opportunity to confess our sins or to receive the anointing of the sick or whatever it might be. The opportunity to talk to a spiritual director or a confessor. Indeed, we have all this assistance, we have all these graces through the merits of Christ that were won for us on the first Good Friday uh, that we have recourse to. That all Christians who, of goodwill, who have recourse to Christ, especially those of us who have access to the sacraments, can have access to every day, every day. And we know it's only through the grace of Christ that we can walk successfully our own personal way of the cross. We were uh, talking about the role of pilgrimage a little bit earlier. Yes. And. Um, one of the great things about a pilgrimage is that opportunity to to look inwardly and to try to listen to the voice of God as he speaks to us. We see that our, our Lord has resumed his journey, has picked up his cross, and continues to make his way to Calvary. soldiers are no less insistent or cruel in spite of his three falls. And Jesus' bravery and willingness is unwavering. In the background, uh, you can see that the uh, Archbishop is uh, part of this uh, way of the cross, along with uh, Father Victor, the rector of the cathedral, several other priests. There are also interfaith leaders uh, who join us uh, on this day. Uh, we are always uh, honored to have our brothers and sisters as Christians uh, join us in this. Uh, and even more, uh, some non-Christian leaders also uh, share with us. Uh, they may not share our faith exactly, but they have a great sense of uh, brotherhood and sisterhood with us here in San Antonio. That's right, Father Larry. As we have said earlier, this 30-year tradition of the public reenactment of the Way of the Cross is something for all San Antonians and people of all faiths and of no faith. Uh, and the, the fact that interfaith and ecumenical leaders are accompanying Archbishop and the rector of the cathedral is a symbol of that. Uh, our brothers and sisters throughout the city of San Antonio know that this is a special a sacred time for Christians and uh, they respect and accompany us in this in this special day. We, uh, one of the things that I do, uh, Gloria, in the Archdiocese is I work with the interfaith and ecumenical uh, communities yes, and uh, we have had a wonderful, wonderful relationship with people of, of many, many faiths for a very long time. It's uh, interesting. San Antonio did not go through some of the difficulties as a city that many other cities did during the time, for example, of desegregation and all of that. Some cities had a lot of violence, exactly. Mm -hmm. But what was unique here is that faith leaders uh, came together. Uh, Archbishop Lucy, uh, some of the rabbis. Who was the uh, Archbishop of San Antonio at that at time. At that time. Came together with the rabbis, with the Protestant leaders, and worked to help the city 
make that transition and that change. That's wonderful. Well, here in Main Plaza, where we are, Father Larry, we can hear the procession approaching. We can hear the faint sounds of people quietly walking the way, and they are nearing. see there the two thieves as we recall that Jesus was not crucified alone but he was crucified in between two thieves yes that is uh, one of the jails that building that you're looking at in the shot uh, that is a jail and uh, the Archbishop always wants to stop along the journey and to pray for those who are imprisoned. Yes. Uh, we know that many people perhaps are imprisoned for crimes they have committed, but others may be innocent, like Jesus was. Yes. And there we could see the Archbishop there in the center of the previous shot wearing the zucchetto uh, to identify him as the Archbishop. And we will see him again a little bit later. Yes. Uh, yes, that's also a tradition of Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller to, on the way of the cross, to stop and pray briefly in front of the prison uh, for those incarcerated, justly or unjustly. Mm -hmm. We need to remember, uh, I think, perhaps in our prayers uh, over this weekend, uh, not only those who are incarcerated, but their families as well, who often suffer even more than those in prison. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. yes. Uh, that's true. When we celebrated the Jubilee Year of Mercy here in San Antonio, one of the Jubilee Days was for the imprisoned and their families. That's right. Certainly, uh, we could not well, we could invite, but we could not welcome those in prison to the cathedral on that Jubilee Day, but we did welcome the families of all those imprisoned uh, to the cathedral on that day. So here we return to the Way of the Cross. We can see the procession as it continues, and now we can see the Simon of Cyrene, who is Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller, yes. carrying the cross. Seeing him carry the cross is a reminder to us that uh, it is our mission to carry our cross each day. And in doing so, we are accompanying our Lord. We are joining our sacrifices to his sacrifice, the supreme sacrifice. Our sufferings to his. And exactly. Yes, and the only reason that Simon of Cyrene was pressed into service was that the Romans did not want Jesus to die on the way. They wanted him to die on the cross. It would have been much easier, much simpler, much more merciful for him to have died before being crucified. But Christ was willing to, have to drink from the cup the Father had prepared for him. My dear people, with the eyes of faith, we stand at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mother and the beloved disciple. This year, due to the current crisis, to a greater or lesser degree, we are also sharing with the Lord and with Mary, his mother, the same feelings of anxiety sorrow, frustration, loneliness, and sadness. And we can offer them to Jesus so that he presents them to the Father on his cross. The Passion narrative gives us valuable insights. Jesus is the Lamb of God. 
he's condemned to death at noon when the Passover lambs are being slaughtered. After Jesus' death, the soldiers do not break his legs. It states in Scripture that the people of God are not to break any of the bones of the Passover lamb. He is the suffering servant who goes silently to his death despite an unjust accusation, like a lamb led to slaughter. Jesus is the triumphant lamb of the book of Revelation, forever conquering the forces of evil. He wants to do the Father's will and fulfill it. Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for his flock. The good shepherd takes good care of his flock, guiding them along safe paths that lead to good pastures. He protects them from harm and gathers those who stray away. He is willing to die so that his flock may be saved. Jesus is the royal Messiah. The cross is his throne. His crown is one of thorns. His dialogue with Pontius Pilate reveals that Jesus' kingdom is not of this world, but he is a servant king. The Son of God has humbly emptied himself and taken the form of a servant, slave, serving others and turning no one away. Jesus is also the new Adam, and his mother is the new Eve. The first man and woman lived in the Garden of Eden until they said no to God's command and sinned. Then they were exiled from the Garden. Jesus' agony begins in a garden, and the tomb in which he is laid is also in a garden. Jesus said yes to God, even accepting a horrible death on the cross, and when the dust has settled, the new man is still in a garden. He learned to say yes to God from his mother. When Mary was told by the angel that she was going to have a son through the version of the Holy Spirit, she was puzzled because she was not yet married. However, when she heard that God has chosen her to be the mother of his beloved son, she said yes at the great cost to herself. We stand at the foot of the cross on Good Friday with a sorrowful mother and thank God for his enduring love for us. Dear lady, our mother, teach us to say yes to God's will as you and your son did. We see that uh, the Archbishop continues to carry the cross, taking the role of Simon of Cyrene. And the interesting thing, Gloria, is that uh, Simon of Cyrene literally was from Cyrenica. He was not a resident of Jerusalem. He had gone there as a pilgrim for the Passover mm. uh, to come to make yes. his sacrifice in the temple, along with thousands of others who had come to the city at that time. And sometimes uh, maybe we come across things in our lives that we weren't anticipating. I think that Simon of Cyrenica was not anticipating that he would be pressed into this kind of service. Obviously. And now we see it is uh, Father Victor Valdez, who is rector of San Fernando Cathedral, now carrying the cross. He is accompanied by deacons of the cathedral. to the cathedral now. Actually, in the background, we can hear the drums and the trumpets as they're making their way. Yes, yes. They might even be picked up by our mics pretty soon. Yes, it was also a hot and sunny day in Jerusalem, that first Good Friday. Uh, we can see people anticipating the arrival of Christ and the procession here in the main plaza. They are busy fanning themselves uh, in the hot sun. It's, uh, it's spring in San Antonio, which means it could easily be 90 degrees. That's right. 
Yes, yes, which is one reason why we can hold an outdoor uh, passion play. You know, today, uh, many parts of the country, particularly in the east, are going through a lot of storms and all of that today. Yes, yes, they are. Our, our thoughts and prayers are with you, especially those that are under tornado threats and uh, threats of flood. Those are crosses that people are carrying now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I think that one of the things that helps us to endure our sufferings is to offer it in sacrifice. I, my mom used to tell me when I was a kid, she would say, offer it up. And I, did your mom ever say that to you? Uh, I think so. Yes. I never quite understood what that meant until I was a little bit older. Yes, yes, yes. We, I like to think that we all grow in grace and wisdom uh, as we get older and understand some of these things. Uh, that our parents did their best to teach us right. and that we have learned about our faith. That's right. Sometimes we are going through things that we have no control over. We have uh, illnesses, we have uh, 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 financial difficulties, we have uh, uh, members of our families that are out of control, that uh, painful experiences that we go through. And we just want to know how, you know, how do we make sense of this? Now uh, we see that Jesus has uh, been approached by Veronica, yes. and she has uh, used her cloth, her veil, to try to bring some comfort to Jesus by touching his face. And of course, uh, we have that very famous image of Christ that is then imprinted on that cloth. Veronica's veil. The, yes. uh, they're getting closer. They're getting very close now. You can see uh, from our vantage point the uh, police officers who are assisting with our crowds today and getting the people to uh, move out of the way so that the procession can come through uh, to be with us here in San Fernando Cathedral. Yes, yes. And that Via Dolorosa uh, on that, uh, that first Good Friday it is uh, fitting that the street on which the procession is going is named Dolorosa. Uh, I'm not sure that that was the precise reason that the street was chosen. I think it was chosen because it was the most appropriate way, uh, because there is some construction going on around the cathedral, but Christ is in fact walking Dolorosa Street in the heart of San Antonio. So, uh, so much all around us describes how our faith has affected our lives even today. Uh, Dolorosa, Via Dolorosa, is part of the ancient city of Jerusalem, and Dolorosa Street also runs through the heart of San Antonio. I think that as uh, Jesus approached uh, Calvary, Golgotha, uh, which is now contained within the Holy Sepulchre yes. Church in Jerusalem, that uh, it's almost unimaginable the, the physical, mental, and spiritual exhaustion uh, he must have been experiencing. I see the drummers now through uh, the windows here in our studio meaning that uh, I can even see uh, the soldiers approaching. So Christ and the procession is nearing very close to Main Plaza. They are approaching Golgotha, which we know from the scripture stories, from the Gospels, that Golgotha was just outside the walls of the city, the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, now, as you mentioned, Father Larry, uh, Golgotha is encased, really, inside the huge and ancient church of the Holy Sepulcher, uh, the Holy Tomb, which is part of the inside of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And when you enter the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, you have to climb 
some stairs. You have to go up a hill inside the church itself because we know that from the gospel stories that Jesus had to climb up a hill to to the hill of Golgotha, to that place of the skull. The symbolism of all that should not be lost on us. First of all, that that sacrifice of Jesus was as an outcast outside the city walls, not in the holy city. Yes. And that he had to go up a mountain, not the temple mount, but the mount of the skull, there to be crucified, there to offer his life. And uh, it is, uh, as you say, to to go to Golgotha now, it's you have to climb a very steep. Staircase yes, uh, to yes. reach the top, of it. which was cut into that hill. That hill is, in fact, inside that ancient church of the Holy Sepulchre. And as you climb there, on one side, you see the place where Jesus originally was nailed to the cross, and then just to the left of it, on top of that hill inside the church, is the place where he was crucified, where he died for all of us. Gloria, from our studio, literally just passing up uh, by our windows, are hundreds of people uh, who are in front of the procession. Uh, There will be many, many more behind the procession or alongside the procession. And many other hundreds who are lining uh, Main Plaza right now. Uh, those who have been here in front of the cathedral since fr- uh, waiting for this procession to enter the space where the reenactment of the crucifixion will take place in just a few more moments. As this uh, procession approaches, uh, we consider again that the exhaustion that Jesus must have been experiencing, and yet people will still uh, approach it. In just a few moments, the uh, what are referred to in the scriptures as the daughters of Jerusalem, or the, or the women, the weeping women, yes. will will come to him. There's an interesting symbolism of that in the scripture because the uh, in the Old Testament the daughters of Jerusalem meant the other countries that, that surrounded that area yes, and right. so uh, it is a kind of a double meaning when Jesus says you know don't don't weep for me weep for yourselves and for your children uh, because he knows what is coming upon them and uh, he knows what is coming upon us as well that's why we need to be joined to his grace, that we need to put ourselves under the blood of his suffering. And that's why we take today to remember, to reenact, to revisit this story of our salvation, this pivotal moment in the life of Christ and the culmination of Christ's work because it affects us even today. It is the fountain of grace. I believe it was John St. John Chrysostom who said that grace flowed from the wounds of Christ on the cross. So those wounds uh, which were anticipated through his original whipping and who will, that will culminate in the crucifixion are the fount of those graces that we still receive today. Ascending the steps into the main plaza is uh, symbolic of Jesus' ascension of the mountain of Calvary. Right. Calvary. Golgotha, those, both those terms used in scripture, it's the same place. And the drums are used to call attention to this public execution that's about to take place. 
the Romans to make an example of Christ so that others know what is what would be coming to those who would defy Rome and would defy and, and who would make themselves a king in defiance of Caesar. Over the years, uh, Gloria, I've talked to many, many people who have come to witness uh, this passion play, and uh, the people are so profoundly struck by seeing it live. Um, I'm not sure that television even fully captures that experience. Uh, and although we know it's a play, still the human reality of uh, the horror of this, of the suffering of this, and connecting it with uh, our faith or sacred scriptures is such a powerful, powerful experience. It is. It is, Father Larry, and that's why it's a 30-year tradition that I think will continue in San Antonio. The drums fade. As Jesus reaches the place. Falls for the third time. Yes. Still they taunt him. Still they have no mercy, no pity for him who, in mercy and pity for us, endures this cross. And there we see the daughters of Jerusalem, the weeping women. Yes. And Jesus tells them to weep for themselves and for their children. Who were braver than most of the apostles themselves right. by approaching Jesus on his way of suffering. Gloria, aside from the sound of the soldiers taunting him, it is silent in Main Plaza now. And there are hundreds and hundreds of people there. But the drama of this moment is so real, so powerful. And there we can see in the background the facade of the Cathedral of San Fernando. And we have arrived at the place of crucifixion. Soldiers will affix him to that cross. Oh, I'm actually going in there to shoot. I'm the main camera. There's no camera behind you. The two thieves have already been set upon their crosses. And as we know from the Gospels, they were tied. They were not nailed to their crosses. Only Christ was nailed. Only Christ was nailed to his cross. And here it comes. And the 
other. Now they were to fix the speed. Those are four of the five wounds of Christ, his hands and his feet. Later, the side will be pierced with the lens. The, the fifth wound of Christ. The one afflicted post mortem. This is the experience of complete abandonment in this moment. Life and breath being taken from him. The people gazing upon him. His followers scattered, afraid. Perhaps those who abandoned him the most, the ones who he loved the most, except his mother and the apostle, the, apostle, the one whom he loved. We just saw that they gambled away his cloak. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. And then the good thief responds. We are being punished for the crimes we have committed. But this man is innocent. This day you will be with me in paradise. The words we all wish to hear. prophecy of Isaiah, that of the suffering servant, for those who believe and those who hear those words and believe in Christ, know it is he. Jesus speaks to his mother, she says, to behold her son. The Apostle John, the beloved dis disciple. And he says to John, Behold your mother. From that moment on, the scriptures tell us John embraced her as his own. And indeed, the whole church does. Yes.
from that moment, she became our spiritual mother and the mother of the whole church. I thirst. Bitter wine is presented to him on a sponge, but he cannot drink. Jerusalem is split in two. There's a terrible earthquake. The sky darkens. In truth, this is the Son of God. of the Blessed Mother and the other women who were with him in that moment. We are reminded of the words of the beautiful and ancient hymn, the Stabat Mater. At the cross, her station keeping, stood the mournful mother of the There's Longinus inflicting the fifth wound, as you mentioned earlier, Father Larry. From which flowed blood and water a sign to us of, again, the sacraments we celebrate in the church, the water of baptism that leads us to the blood of Christ and his holy Eucharist. is quiet with only the sounds of the bells of the cathedral. In Jerusalem, it was getting close to sunset, close to the time of the beginning of the Sabbath. And so as you recall in the sacred scriptures, they had requested that the body of Jesus be taken down so that the Jewish people could celebrate the Passover. And Pontius Pilate did allow this. In most circumstances, he probably would not have, but he did not want riots in the streets. And so Joseph of Arimathea asks for the body of Christ and his lifeless body is taken down from the cross.
body of Jesus is being carried away for burial. We know from the scriptures that Joseph of Arimathea chose his own tomb, for it was close by. We see that the burial shroud is placed over Jesus' body. Though his face is still exposed, and there'd be a, another cloth that will be placed over his face. A separate one, yes. The interior of the San Fernando Cathedral will be the place of entombment. Today, if you go to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, you can see the edicule, which contains the actual tomb where the body of Jesus lay. Yes. Which after centuries and after being in danger of collapse, it is finally being uh, restored mm -hmm. so that the structure will remain sound and it can continue to be visited inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And so, as you mentioned, Father Larry, today San Fernando Cathedral will play the role of that Holy Sepulchre for us today. Brothers and sisters, we thank you for joining us for this beautiful passion play. Our hopes and our prayers today, that today will be a day of great spiritual renewal. And one of great graces and great mercy for you, your family, all those you love, and speaking of family and friends, just to acknowledge our many families and many friends, uh, especially some of mine watching from Virginia, from Montana, and Washington, D.C. We thank you for watching. We pray God's blessings upon you. A blessed Triduum to you and a blessed and holy Easter season. <laughs>